Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Range Pass podcast by Callaway. Got two very, very special guests today. Um, very excited about this one. Excited about all of them, but more so about this one. Um, first of all, Henrik Stenson, the Iceman. Just gonna just gonna list off a few bits that he's done. He's done a few bits in his time. He's got uh, eleven European Tour wins, seven PGA Tour wins, a major championship win, the Open Championship. Five Ryder Cups and a silver Olympic medal. Welcome, Henrik. How are you? Thank you. Doing good. How are you? Yeah, pretty good, mate. Pretty good. Excited to have you on. Thank you. Nice to be and here. And our eventually. second guest. A second guest, eventually. Um, <laughs> you just heard his voice there, Pete Cowan, who, um, from doing a small bit of research, I'm not sure, not sure how you categorize these, Pete, but you've got your players, um, unless you've snuck a win in there, a couple of wins in there, got 250 PGA Tour, European Tour victories and eight major championships. Um, you've obviously... Ten. Ten. Ten, there you go, ten major championships. You know, get, get the researchers back on that one. Um, just uh, amazing numbers there, guys. So welcome, Pete. Thank you for giving up your time, as well as Henrik. Great Thanks, Good to have you on. I was so, wearing Pete, Callaway on all of them as well, Zay. Every single one. That's um, <laughs> that's impressive, as you are now, repping the brand. So, uh, Pete, you've been with Callaway since 2011, is that correct? Yeah, yeah 10 years. Why why Callaway? What what got you in with Callaway to begin with? Uh, well, I've known Pete Harrison. I played a lot of golf with Pete Harrison in the Safari Tour and European Tour. And uh, obviously, I coached Ian Garber, who's now one of the Callaway uh, senior guys on the truck. So... It made sense, really, to actually come, and they're a great team in any case, and it's a great product. Yeah, and have you ever given Pete Harrison a lesson? Uh, he doesn't listen, so there's not much point. <laughs> he does love it. And Henrik, you had a bit of a break in your time from Callaway, um, but how, so how long? How many years have you had in Callaway? Do you know? Uh, I did a. Uh... Uh, 2004 until 2006, mm -hmm. and then started again uh, 2014 on up until current date. So it's been, I'd say, more or less for for half of my career. And uh, same what what Pete said. I mean, it's a, it's a great team behind it, and I think in terms of products, certain brands just have a certain look and feel. And uh, I mean, I've I've always enjoyed playing Callaway, even even during. Some of those uh, times when I wasn't a full staff player, I still had a lot of Callaway products in my in my bag. So it's always been uh, been uh, a brand that I've used over my career, and uh, obviously happy to have been a, a full time staff player for the last seven eight years. Oh, good man, good man. And 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 talking about you know across your career, could you kind of like so in some way within this uh, very small time frame we have, could you kind of outline your journey from? Um, Give us a brief on, you know, from starting the game to sitting there now, uh, having achieved everything you've achieved. Like, where did it start for you? And then how did it grow into turning professional and then becoming a major champion? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much time we have, but uh, I, I picked up a golf club when I was 11 the first time. So I didn't have the, the kind of regular uh, introduction, I guess, to the game because none of my family played, uh, played golf. So it was just a coincidence, joined a friend. Uh, his family played, and they uh, they took me to the local driving range. And uh, I guess I had a few five irons out of the middle, and uh, wanted to stop playing. And my my parents were supportive, and got me lessons and equipment, and kept on driving me to the golf course. And summer times I, I spent every day out on the course and playing and practicing uh, with my friends. So uh, yeah, I got into golf at 11, 12 years old, and quite quickly uh, at the age of 14, I gave up playing soccer, and I just fully wanted to get into into my golf so uh, I think I specialized fairly early after after picking up the game and uh, played amateur golf for Sweden for uh, five years on the national squad and, and turned pro at the age of 22 uh, got out onto the challenge tour pretty quickly and did well and uh, got onto the main tour in 2001 managed to to win my first year on the European tour the Benson and Hedges at the Belfry uh, started working with Pete at the end of that year. Uh, I think it was uh, at the, the Volvo Masters at Monte Castillo in October 2001 that I that I uh, got together with Pete for the first time. And uh, yeah, we've been a team ever since. So uh, 20, 20 odd years later, here we're on in a podcast. And 
and um, obviously the the highlights uh, you, you went through some of them earlier with the Ryder Cups and and uh, I think in, in golf we don't get get to win that often obviously when mm-hmm. when we play against 132 156 other players so every mm-hmm. win is kind of special in its own way but um, uh, my best year I'd say was 2013 with with the FedEx Cup and race to Dubai win and a lot of strong strong tournaments and wins and and then um, the 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 solar highlight of course being the the win at the Open Championship in in 2016 so yeah it's been an amazing run and uh, yeah very fortunate to to have traveled the world and and got to play the game of golf for, for my living and, and been successful and and seen all these places and uh, we're still enjoying the ride and I think we've got a few few more good years uh, to squeeze out of uh, out of the game so um, yeah here we are and working away and uh, yeah it's only a couple hours ago since I saw Pete on the range here at Wentworth. Still working so you guys are still working hard as ever I mean yeah as, as you say like still so much more to go like you, you know you, st- you hit the ball plenty far enough you know you keep yourself in good shape it's you know it's, you probably you probably got probably got at least another 20 years on you haven't you with his guidance <laughs> i am about 20 years that's for sure. <laughs> yeah that well, my... stress, mate? <laughs> yeah i think so that's the stress remove that hat and we'll see how many how many yeah, hours you've got yeah, left that's so. why i haven't removed it uh, <laughs> and pete yeah. so uh henrik started uh, mentioned there when you started with him at uh, monte castillo um what did how did that meeting come about? Um, and when you first worked with Henrik, were you kind of, kind of you, were you aware of his game? And what were yeah, your it first? Couldn't, kind it couldn't, of it's thoughts? a cow's ass with a banjo when I first, <laughs> when I first met him. <laughs> Could you at least see the potential in that? No, there's no potential at all. <laughs> it's Grant amazing thought, what Grant thought there was a lot of potential. Grant Berry thought there was a lot of potential, and he said. I've got a kid here that I think is potentially a great player, but he's a bit confused at the moment. <laughs> 20 years later, we're still, confu- uh, we're still, still confused. Still confused, yeah. yeah. I'm confused yeah. even now, that's for sure. Scratching you confuse head, me every time I see you, that's the problem. I think I've got it right, and I see Henry, and I know, yeah. I know I'm struggling every time I see you. <laughs> <laughs> Brings you back down to earth, does he? Yeah, definitely. What was, what's been like the, the big... You know the big improvement taking him from you know kind of a barn door to you know to all those victories and essentially let's say for instance you know I watched that watched every shot that round at the Open Championship when you went up against Phil, which is one of the you know the best battles of all time. You know what what was the what did you help him improve? And what did you see? How did he grown as a player to get to that point from where he was when you first set eyes on him? Well, I thought I'd made him understand what a golf swing should be, but I'm not so sure now after 20 years. But it worked It worked in the early days, but it took probably two and a half years to get there. It wasn't an easy travel, was it, Henrik? We, you know, no. we tried to get rid of each other about a dozen times, but not neither <laughs> of us would go. <laughs> no, no. I mean, when, when we started back in 2001, I was struggling at the end of that year for sure. And, and uh, it was basically a... Uh, a rebuild of the golf swing. I mean, we spent a, a good two years before before I was was in a in a in a good good state, both technically and mentally. So I mean, it was it was a long journey, and that was really the the win. My second win on the European Tour in two thousand and four was was kind of the mm-hmm. was, was kind of the comeback from from all the hard work, and and uh, from from there on, I felt like. A lot of the stuff we did on the on the short game was really key to me elevating my game, and I, I tied it up. Um, once we got the the consistency in the, in the long game, it was really the short game that made a difference to to turn a a solid sixty nine uh, into sixty seven or a, or seventy one into sixty nine just by by keeping it tidy around the greens and and take. Uh, take the opportunities a bit more and and save yourself out of a trap or a chip or, or mm-hmm. a tough lie. Um, yeah. I think I've been been always trying to play a pretty steady game, a lot of tee to green, uh, hitting fairways, hitting greens, uh, creating opportunities, taking them when they come, and and not putting myself in in too much stress. Um, I still like to to take chances and and go for certain shots, but I, I think I'm a uh, I, I play defensively at times and I play aggressively at times when I feel like the moment is right. So it's not like 
just the one way to to play the game and oh, of course course depending as well you you make up a game plan and and uh, you you feel like you want to you want to try and get the most out of out of your rounds while still not giving away too much in case it doesn't mm -hmm. work out so it's uh, i mean it's a combination of of playing to your strength uh, strategy playing smart and and taking the opportunities so i think uh, i think i've done a pretty good job of that over the years and Pete, do you do you get involved with you know all the aspects? So obviously, there you, you look after Henrik Swing, his short game. Do you get involved with how he? Do you guys chat about putting? No, I don't know putting. No, I don't know putting. I hate putting. putting. I hate putting. <laughs> I hate putting. <laughs> Should be a quarter of a shot. I hate it. <laughs> you, you and Ben Hogan, eh? Yeah. But like for the for the strategy and you know his mind mindset and that sort of stuff no he's got a guys... good he's got a good guy on the bag there he's got lordy back on the bag so he's had some good caddies yeah. in the, over the years and uh, i think they do a great job um sometimes mm. they might ask me but not very often really i mean it's more making sure that their swing is tight and you know yeah. the short game's tight and phil kenyon yeah. obviously does henrik's putting which is great uh, and he's got a good team around him really and, yeah. and once he gets his Heading gear is fine, no problem at all. So off and, off and running. I mean, so like, because I, I mean, from what I understand, Henrik, you like to not curve the ball very much. Is you t t like to be quite neutral? Would that be fair? To That's say? an understatement, uh, Zane. He, well, if it well, goes got... two yards, if it goes two yards left, there's no clubs left in his bag. That's the problem. And then you have, well, we have to go to the truck and get some new new shouts. Yeah. Well, that kind of that was the kind of leading me in. Is I mean, because. I mean, my next question for you, Pete, was really was to which you kind of answered there is, is that an easy uh, aspect to deal with, or is that difficult? No, is it it's a challenge? Very, it's very difficult when you've got a perfectionist. I mean, Henrik's a perfectionist, and I certainly have been. <laughs> As I get older, I'm a bit more mellow these days, but I, I certainly you? was. I certainly was a perfectionist for a long, long time, and I tried to make Henrik a perfectionist, which I think was probably. The right thing and the wrong thing at times, really. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't think I needed any help, Pete. No, no, you definitely didn't. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, uh, I think we're both um, on that road to perfection, but uh, mm -hmm. sometimes it's a very difficult road and uh, it leads you down the wrong path sometimes. And we've been there, we've been down the wrong path a couple of times, but we managed to get it back. So um, it's interesting and you develop mm -hmm. that. I mean, I've been a pro golfer now, what, 54 years. So I've seen most things in golf and no, uh, no. seen all you know aspects of it and how it's changed over the years, how the equipment's changed and the golf swings changed. And we really tried to get Henrik with you know a better awareness of what his body does in the golf swing and then mm -hmm. make sure when the body works properly, it stabilizes the movement of the club. So that's why you can hit it so straight when you do it right. Yeah. And have you have you ever had a moment with him where you just thought to, you wouldn't say to him, "Can we just hang down the left and cut this one?" Or no, are you just happy to keep on like to give him what he wants? No, he, he likes. He doesn't mind a five yard cut, but he hates a two yard draw. <laughs> Is that right? Unless it starts right, though. Oh uh, well, sometimes yeah, but it doesn't very really often start right for you. Do you, sure. do you try and Henry? Do you, is that through the bag for you? Is that like more, drive, uh, more, more or less? Right I mean, short arms? I think the the way it's been it's been working for me is it's been more of I'm making the pass and you know something very neutral comes out when when I when I put the swing on mm -hmm. the on the club and and hit the ball and I, I just like to play fairly one one dimensional in that sense I just want to stand up there and aim down yeah. you know wherever my start line is going to be and I make the same movement and I get the same result and once that's working it is yeah. kind of a pretty easy way to do it. Uh, it it would be no different if you play a 10 yard cut or 10 yard draw you you have a lot of players yeah. that, that just want to try and repeat the same thing but of course uh, at times when, when you're not quite on it's harder if you if you don't know if it's going to four, go four yards right or five yards left you, you kind of expose both sides of the golf course and, and when you're playing mm -hmm. more of a strong ball flight yeah. uh, in terms of curvature one way or the other it, it's it's easier to then say okay I'm aiming down the left I'm going to cut it if it yeah. cuts five yards it's fine if it cuts ten yards it's fine too but I mean there's the double crossing that always that always puts you in problems. Yeah. If you have a two two way miss on the course, it's kind of hard to to take uh, take one side mm. out. E even if it's only a few yards, sometimes you, you want to be able to to guarantee it's not going in one direction. So 
I think that that's really the yeah. the hard part. But when when I've been swinging well and and I'm playing good golf, it's uh, it's it's been very neutral and and very effective as well. So I mean, any, anything that's good for you can can sometimes be a a hindrance as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, um, you know, just recently you've been um, showing some some really good form. Um, you know, had some really good finishing, been putting yourself in in the mix. Has there been anything um, kind of leading up to this recent like run of good form, or is it have you felt like it's been coming for a little while? Have you done anything different, or is this or is this this the ebb and flow of you know? Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been focusing hard, trying to trying to get things back in good order, and uh, I mean, short game and putting certainly been tied in the last in the last couple of months here, and and uh, that's kind of kept me. Kept me more in the ball game maybe than before. We still we still have some challenges and we keep on working hard on the long game. So I wouldn't say that we we're really firing on all cylinders, but hopefully we we're getting closer and closer. And uh, I mean the the way I've been been rolling it lately. If I if I can get my striking to 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 where it can be, uh, we can certainly have some fun times on the golf course. So it's it's constant constant development and and uh, work in progress and. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking. At the same time, we want to have short-term results. Uh, we, we always got to bear the long-term processes in mind and, and keep on doing the right things. Because, uh, yeah, you're gonna have the ebbs and flows, but if you do the right things over time, you, you will get the results eventually. So uh, patience is obviously key, and hmm. uh, when the when the when the mindset is right, we, we got we got enough patience to to wait it out also. Yeah. Yeah, and Pete, uh, you know, is there anything that you've you, you feel like you guys have been focusing on, or that you wouldn't have normally done, or is it this, is it the same sort of uh, patterns? Well, you see with Henrik, Henrik thinks that thinks I've told him a thousand yes. different things over the, over the last twenty years, and I'm saying it's a thousand things that mean exactly the same, and he doesn't agree with that. So that's where we beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> so he thinks I've given him a thousand different thought process, and that's why he's that's why his hairs up on end. Now. That's the that's the brain going haywire with all those thoughts, those thousand thoughts. <laughs> But uh, no, oh. t- trying to get the body working and much, much better in the golf swing. And that's the key to it. You, yeah. you move the implement with the body and it's as simple as yeah. that. The arm and and club movement has, moves as a consequence. And then, you know, provided the body works properly, it'll stabilize the outside. So, yeah. again, great body movement creates great arm, hand and club movement. And yeah, I guess there's no, there's no quick fix to that sort of thing. That's just like a, a day-to-day, keeping on top of it, watching it, keeping it in check. Well, we try not we try not to do magic month, you know, magic move of the month. But I yeah. mean, we have been down that one as well. But most of the time, we try not to do magic move of the month. But yeah. uh, as I said, Henrik, if I sell him something new, he thinks it's totally new, and it's actually trying to freshen his mind up to the same thing, which yeah. is difficult for players. And then you know, like for the for the for the neutral shot, for the straight shot, is there is there any sort of geometry in the setup um, that you would? Do you look at that Henrik does well, like as in terms of, you know, is the face set square or slightly open for a straight shot? Is it, Henrik you know, likes it slightly moves? open because he's squaring it over the body turn. So that's, you right. know, that's how yeah. you would do that really slightly open. Yeah. You'd rather see it slightly open than, than closed, certainly. Yeah, and, and that's something that you would see in Henrik and you just keep a check on that for him. Uh, yeah, but as eyes. I said, he, he, it's like his pitching. He, he loves the open club face to square it up to use the bounce better. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't like a leading edge that's fully square and, uh, you know, nip it in there. He likes to feel that the bounce is actually working properly and we can get the one bounce check. And that's when yeah. we know the wedges are doing, you know, the job yeah. when we get the one bounce check. So then that will kind of lead into it. Like, we've got a couple of questions for some um, for some listeners, uh, for viewers. Um, Pete, what is what would be the best piece of advice to for AMBs to cure their irons, to get that compressed strike? I mean, you could probably talk for about three <laughs> days on this subject, but can you somehow condense it into 60 seconds for us? Uh, well, I always t- talk about the axe drill, you know, the axe drill where you turn the club upside down and you use the wrist properly, yeah. and then you turn that side on and you move that, and, you know, then obviously you can compress it because you, you're squaring the arms and club up with the body turn, but you're only going to get compression yeah. if you're doing that. You're not going to get compression by shaft lean or shaft drive. And everybody thinks you do, but you don't. You mm-hmm. get shaft lean and shaft pressure with, you know, the pressure on the shaft from the body turn. So uh, 
unless you get really good body action, you would struggle to get a lot of compression on your irons. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, if, if anyone watching or listening, um, I'm pretty sure you can go to YouTube and put in peak count axe drill, and it is a really good drill. Interesting enough, I was, <laughs> I was there. <laughs> Make sure you stumble across the right video. Um, yeah, I was chatting to a player earlier in the year, and there were we were down at your academy in Dubai. Um, it's a tall player. Of, uh, it was, I think, maybe David Howe, and he was he was chatting about who he was hitting the ball really nice. He went to the course, hit the ball really nicely. I said, "Oh, Dave, you're hitting the ball really good." You know what, what you've been up to? He goes, "Well, I was just sitting having a coffee in the uh, in in the lobby in the Peak Howen um, Academy. I've just been watching the videos that are on loop the whole time, and uh, I've just been doing a couple of things." And he's like. I'm pretty sure Pete told me to do that 20 years ago. I thought I'd give that a try, and it, and it, it worked today. And he's, he was like, I don't know why I didn't listen to it then. It's mad, isn't it? There's, there's so yeah. many things, which it's just good info, right? It's good <laughs> hopefully it's, hopefully it's good info. You'll have to ask Henry. Sorry. Well, <laughs> but it's, it's your not, record is pretty good, boys. It's, it's not pretty good. Any harm some, years, some, of, some of it uh, is decent, yeah. 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 Some just some. Just well, some. Not, not according to Hank Haney. You you one that's missed yeah. out, Henry, according to Hank Haney. Oh dear, you missed uh, out. Really, not it should have been not more me. aggressive, according to Hank Haney. Oh, he, yeah. he, he knew. He knew that he he knew. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I think you've done it right with Pete here, um, Henry. I can't uh, I can't let you go or get through this without asking about your clubs, um, and I'm sure you're probably bored to death about people talking about your clubs, but the um, the Legacy Blacks. I reckon about, it was probably 10, even more years ago, however many years ago it was, I was at, at HQ in Chessington at Callaway and I was with Dave Barton um, and he was doing some, you know, lot of lies for me. And a tour player uh, called up and he was like, oh, hi mate, how's it going yet? Yeah. And he said, uh, Legacy Blacks, yeah, I've got like four sets of those, mate. If you want any of these, you're going to have to take up with Henrik. I, I cannot help <laughs> you. All right, bye. Done. I was like, right, okay. Um, and am I right in saying you're still using same the same irons? Uh, same irons it was, today? Uh, that was kind of the beginning of, of that great run we had in, in 2013. So I came off the, the US Open and I was uh, at Marion, the one that Justin won. And I was struggling a bit with, with hitting flyers out of the rough. Uh, and uh, I flew to, mm. to Munich, to the, to the BMW uh, International in Munich. And uh, Monks had, had uh, built up two different sets uh, for me to try and the Legacy Black was one of them and I, I didn't hit uh, any flyers really out of the rough with those ones and uh, started using them I think it's, it's a great looking mm -hmm. club and uh, uh, yeah I, I just been keeping going with, with that one new, new sets of that one and I think we still got two or three sets left and then I mm -hmm. guess we'll retire so we we uh, we we can keep on going for a little yeah. bit, but there, there's many yeah. other models as well. Some of the Apex irons and and a few of the other ones are very similar looking. But I guess I'm 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 a bit traditional in the sense that if I if I find something that works, I I, I really yeah. tend to hang on to it. And there's uh, there's nothing wrong in in not fixing something that that ain't broke, right? So they they've been in there, but we obviously updated yeah. other yeah. stuff like the wedges, the jaws wedges, and. And the uh, and the the yeah. fairway woods and so on. Yeah. So we've, we've had we've had still a, a bit of a change um, over time here with with the equipment as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then the other part, which you know obviously fascinates everybody. You know, you're like the three wood man. Like you know, I watched I was watching some of the Czech Masters, and you're just like you're committed to like getting that three wood out in every situation and and doing what you've got to do with it. You, I think you're too pretty pure three was on the last day onto that ninth green, which I know is a quite a big par fives. You know, you obviously resist the temptation to pull driver at times, which is, you know, which many ams could, could yeah. learn from, from that. So yeah, I think it's, sort of I think which, it's a combination. I mean, it's, on, it's a strong it. three wood. It's, it's been a, a very trusty club for me over, over the years. Uh, uh, some of the tactics with, with me not shaping the ball a lot. I, I feel like on a, on a dog leg where it's, it's curving off to 300 yards. Uh, you, you might feel at times you have to, to kind of mm -hmm. thread a driver or you need to, to take a different line and, and you don't have much margin, then it's always felt very good to, to be able to hit that three wood straight out and not have to worry about shaping it that much. Uh, then at times, it's, it's certainly no lie. It's been a confidence yeah. thing as well. Right. If I feel like I can 
commit with the three wood and, and it's an easier mm -hmm. fairway find than, than trying to go for another 20 yards and, and you feel like it's a bigger chance of ending up in, in, in problems, then certainly it's been, it's been my go-to club. So it's, it's a combination yeah. of tactics, how we feel and, and uh, really what the, what the course requires as well. Then you would argue in, in this day and age that, that you've got you to gotta try and get the most, uh, on, on certain courses at least, in certain holes, you've got to try and get the most out of it from, from the tee box because uh, with, with, with some of the players that are out there, how far they hit it, you, you're just giving too much of an advantage being 30, 40, 50 yards yeah. back. So uh, I'm, I'm never going to compete with them anyway in terms of 350-yard of drives, but I might not afford to be 285 off the tee when I can be 300. At the moment, I'm back on the mm. old Diablo, actually, with the old shaft in. So I've, I, I, I used that for I, many years. Uh, the one I had trusty. when I won the Open, that one gave up just shortly after the, next, uh, the beginning mm. of the next season. That one cracked. And even, even though they, they're technically all the same, I mean, it, it's hard to build three clubs, three drivers, or so three three woods that, yeah. that feel exactly the same. And and um, yeah. even though they all look the same, it's just like you always find one that, that has that little bit extra, the same as an old putter uh, might might just feel that right in your hands. So um, it, it's it's a good compliment, but but it's it's not, I don't think I'll ever find one like the like the old trusted that kind of gave up yeah. there in seventeen. Just just it just sits right, and you just know that you I guess you you can put it down. There's like no questions. You just know that. You got the backing of all the good shots you've gone before you. Well, you know, as you said before, like if it doesn't, if it's not broke. Don't fix it. So, yeah, it becomes almost like a tuning fork. I mean, you know, yeah. you know how it's going to fly and how it's going to perform when you swing it well. So it can almost become a help that when you when you're practicing, if you if you're not quite getting it, you you know that yeah. you're a little bit out yeah. and and yeah. you might have to look for for something to 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 get back uh, back on it 100 percent yeah it's fascinating i mean i, I I'm, pr I'm sure you're probably bored talking about it through but we all love hearing about it and, and it's quite it's quite unique especially in today's game that you know <laughs> you, you you stick to your guns and that's how you play golf and you still put in the low scores doing it you know not necessarily like this new fancy way of doing it so yeah i mean kudos to you on that it's impressive um and probably inspiring to many amateurs who need to sometimes just take a bit of a a bit of a swallow, swallow, swallow the pill yeah. and just a bit more loft, a bit more loft on the driver would help. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Most amateurs. Yeah, I mean, Pete, Pete could could tell you that for sure. I mean, it just gives you a little bit more margin if you have a bit more loft mm -hmm. on the face. Um, whether it is uh, tweaking your your obviously your Callaway driver and just add another yeah. degree yeah. or or half a degree or whatever it might be, it might just it give you help. a little bit more. Room for error to um, to to hit a few more fairways and and then the tactics absolutely. I mean, if you if you're looking on at at how the pros are playing the game, a lot of times it's positioning. Put yourself on the right side of the fairway at the right distance to to have a good approach angle. It's not just about whacking it on every hole. Even though we we kind of gone a little bit yeah. more towards that in the, in the later years, and and it's so course dependent that that strategy yeah. sometimes work at majors, but it might come back and bite you more at majors than it might do at other other regular tour stops as well. So it's really making a plan for the course you're going yeah, to play definitely. for the week. I mean, it's so simple now, isn't it? You know, I played with a, a guy on the Pro-Am uh, at the weekend. You know, wasn't flying his driver. And I'm just like, give it here, wrench, give it another degree and a half. All of a sudden, it's, you know, it's changed his life. I could have, could have spent, as, 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 as Pete would know, <laughs> you, can, you can stand and spend two hours trying to fix someone's move or swing to get this launch. And you can, you know, if you do it, do it properly. Well, you can do it with can, ball. Do it you can do it with ball and driver much easier. Yeah, it's, you can do it. With, get the right ball, yeah. the right driver. It yeah, it easy. exactly. I mean, I know it's, it's obviously great for Henry because he can stand on the range and smash balls all day long. But you know, if it, for your, your man or woman who's got a full time job, like you, yeah, the quick fix it. You need, quick you need fix, sometimes yeah. you need that quick fix. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you don't extend the quick fixes to Henry. You put him through it. It sounds like. Well, I'd like a quick <laughs> fix occasionally. It would make my life easier. So, Pete, obviously you spend a lot of time watching shots on the range. You know, you, and I, I saw it at the opening, like working hard, being there. But I, I presume you've watched some of Henrik's golf over the years that he's put in play. What, what, yeah, you, I hope you think so. so. Um, what, what's been his, in your eyes, your favourite or best shot of Henrik's over his career? Uh, I think the three would at uh, Race to Dubai, really. I mean, I know he drop kicked yeah. it and it went to three foot. <laughs> he's, he's got his plaque there, so it, it was uh, 
But the golf he had that week was when he had 69 out of 72 greens in regulation. I think that was, you know, yeah. pretty impressive that week. Yeah. And obviously with winning the FedEx just before that as well. Yeah. Made, you know, icing on the cake really that year. And Henrik, so, same question to you really. What's been, what's been your favourite or best shot over your, over your time? Yeah, I mean, in, in terms of in terms of a greatest stretch, I mean, there's no question that from from summer until finish of that 2013 season was the the, the kind of best stretch that I played at at my my, my peak yeah. more or less for for five yeah. five months, uh, and I was in contention a lot, winning a lot. But I think that the standout single shot for me is the four iron. is really the four the, the, the four iron. <laughs> <True. laughs> How did we know that? A uh, true, yeah, yeah. yeah was, I mean, that was, it's some uh, shot there. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm two ahead of Phil, and uh, uh, it's good numbers. And I, and I just hit an absolute frozen rope on the perfect line. And uh, I, it's, I know as soon as I hit it, that it's going to be a good shot. Yeah. You can never tell exactly yeah. where it's going to land. But I was, I was so the same as you see someone on a tee. Uh, hitting a drive and they just pick up the tee peg and walk away. I was kind of the same way with our forearm, and I think the commentators weren't even sure if I if I liked yeah, it I remember, or not yeah. because I was up up and away so quickly. And I think it pitched within six foot of the of the hole and finished six seven feet behind the pin. And and uh, anyone who's played the yeah. trune and and the seventeenth like in, into off the yeah. left a little bit there on on that green, it's uh, it's a pretty. Pretty tough shot, and and in that situation to to pull out uh, a, a super solid swing and 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 hit a great shot was obviously something I I needed mm. and wanted, and uh, that that's that's my one standout shot I think if I'm going to choose one. So Henrik, we, we obviously you know follow you on the social media. Uh, you've had a really good back and forth with with Pulse with the uh, with the pranks. There's been some there's been some really good ones. So this is, I kind of got two questions for you on this. So what's been What's been the best prank in that run between you and Pulse so far? Has it been him or have you got him, do you think? No, I, I think I got him. Uh, I certainly pranked him a lot more times. Uh, he might have something lined up for me this week, who knows. But uh, uh, the the car keys in, in Dubai, when I took them out of his locker yeah. and, and then they were running around looking for them back and forth. And yeah, that was that was a like a... Ben Hill moment <laughs> almost when you could have added that music to him and Terry when they were looking yeah. for it and then at the open when we when we chucked a lot of tuna and bread on top of his uh, RV and and he woke up at four thirty and the birds <laughs> were going crazy on top of his bed uh, that was that was pretty oh, sweet so pretty. I'll uh, I'll take those two as my as my yeah, favorite ones they're good and, and then I guess my next question is have you ever dared to prank Pete and what was it if you have. I don't right, think I've, 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 uh, but <laughs> I thought that might thanks be there. for the uh, thanks for the thought though. I mean that that's certainly No, I don't. That's it. Yeah. No chance. All right, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll let get you know my next own back tenfold. I'll get my own back tenfold. Be relationship that's over, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> done. That's that's what I said to somebody when uh, they went in a business deal. Somebody shafted me in a business deal mm-hmm. and I said, "It's all right. I'm a lot older than you." I said, "You know, you better keep looking behind you because when I know I'm going, I'm going to take you with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Well, let's, let's let's wrap it up on that. That's perfect. There you go, there you go, Henrik. So, mate, it's been fascinating uh, chat, chatting to you both. You know, um, obviously, you know, I'll, I'll be following you, Henrik, as, uh, you know, admiring your game. And uh, I was chatting with my pals earlier and I was like, it's actually probably one of my favourite, I don't want to make you blush here, but it's one of my favourite current European players right now. So, Getting to, oh, to thank you. hear some of your, your, your pieces on that. He's not one of he's not one of mine. That's for sure. Pete, Pete, we know that. We know that. Do, do you have a favourite player? I'm not sure if you would have a favourite player. No, they're all the same. Ninety nine point nine percent of them, they're all the same. I thought so. I thought so. And Pete, obviously, it's fascinating you know, hearing some of your insights, and um, you know, obviously, your reputation goes before you. I, and the so unfortunate forth. thing, I forgot most of it, Zane, at my age. You go, actually, well, you know what, actually, one, one last question, because I, I think Pete's, Pete's always done it. Um, he's given us something that we didn't necessarily know uh, about about you before today. Henrik, is there anything that, is there one fact about you that we don't know, that, that nobody, any of the fans wouldn't know, or are you out there? Um. Ooh. It's a bit of put you on the spot question. Yeah, I mean, 
in terms of uh, music taste, for instance, yeah. I, I, I like to, to listen to a lot, but I, I definitely like uh, more, uh, more like EDM, uh, something with a, with a good beat. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm a little bit of a sucker for that kind of music, more okay. like club music. I thought it was ABBA. I thought it was ABBA for you. They just released some new music, actually. I haven't, I haven't listened into that. They just released uh, a few new songs the other yeah, I week, I believe. you buy that one, yeah. I think, ABBA. You'll be the first one. There we go. But, uh, okay. yes, I mean, I, I, I like music. Uh, yeah. and, and I listen to a lot of music, so that might All be right. something not too many people know. Okay. All right, cool. Thank you very much. Well, guys, thanks so much for your time. Have a great week uh, this week at the PGA. Uh, Thank you. Lots of success. And, yeah, to everyone listening and following, follow the, the social channels, follow Cal- at Callaway uh, Golf at EU, and, uh, yeah, just keep checking up and, um, yeah, we'll try and somehow find some guests to, to trump these two. But yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Cheers. All right. Thanks, Thank you. See you tomorrow, Henry. Take care. See you tomorrow. See ya.